Hello to all, I am Vishnu. In this video, uh, I am going to talk about some amazing aspects of metformin. So, I will be mentioning one by one statements and I will be explaining the reason behind why I mentioned that statement. Because whenever we study pharmacology, the most important demerit that we fail to notice is that whenever we study anything about a medicine, we study it as it is. Like for example, if I say today that metformin causes weight loss, you will study it as weight loss. But why it causes weight loss? What is the reason behind it? We don't try to understand. And that is the reason why we usually tend to forget things. So first point, metformin causes weight loss. Now let me come to the reason. See, whenever you are feeling energetic, you won't feel hungry. Always remember this. Whenever you are energetic, you won't feel hungry. Hunger is a sign of tiredness. That means your body is getting tired. It's not getting the energy that it requires. So it is sending a signal to you that it is time to eat something. And when you eat something, your body gets the energy that is required. So your stomach is also full and your body is also happy. And you get the energy also. Metformin does the same thing. Metformin triggers the utilization of glucose. Triggering the utilization of glucose means you know very well that in our body there are trillions and trillions of cells. The cell is the structural and functional unit of the body. So every cell consists of numerous cell organelles and uh, one of the most important cell organelle is mitochondria. Mitochondria is also known as the industry or the powerhouse of the cell. Now for an industry to work, it requires raw materials. So what is the raw material that is delivered to the cell? That is glucose. So glucose is delivered, energy is generated and that is how we feel active throughout the day. Metformin, what it does is it stimulates glucose utilization. That means whatever glucose is there in the blood, it drives that into the cell with the help of insulin so that the cells can utilize the glucose, generate energy and you feel active. Now, as I said before, when you feel active, when you feel energetic, you won't easily get hungry. So that is the reason why anorexia is very commonly seen with metformin. Anorexia is very commonly seen with metformin. And when anorexia happens, you know very well what is the next step that is weight loss. And this is an amazing property which is actually good for type 2 diabetics who are obese because weight loss is a compulsory thing in type 2 diabetes. This is also an amazing property for those females who are suffering from PCOD and they have obesity as well because they have to reduce their body weight. So this side effect of metformin can be utilized in the treatment of females who are suffering from PCOD and they have a high risk of metabolic syndrome or they have obesity as well. Most of the obesity reasons are mainly due to hypothyroidism but otherwise also we see cases in which many females have PCOD with obesity. Metformin is a good choice. So this is the reason why metformin causes anorexia and that leads to weight loss. Now if you simply study in pharmacology book as weight loss, you will never understand the reason behind it and there are so many medicines in this world which causes weight loss, you will get confused in the process. So that is why it's always good to understand the pharmacological actions of a medicine. Another interesting aspect of metformin is that it does not cause hypoglycemia very commonly. It is very seldom seen that metformin by itself causes hypoglycemia. Why? Because it is there in the mechanism itself, it stimulates glucose utilization. It does not increase the quantity of insulin. See, in diabetes, in the management of diabetes, hypoglycemia happens when either the liver is getting damaged because the function of liver is to produce glucose. So when the liver is getting damaged, glucose level reduces, that causes hypoglycemia. Or hypoglycemia can happen when you are using medications which directly trigger insulin quantity increment. That means it increases the quantity of insulin. For example, sulfonylureas, for example, insulin by itself. But metformin 
it does not increase the quantity of insulin it just increases the potency of the same in promoting glucose utilization so that is why metformin by itself does not cause hypoglycemia too often it's very seldom seen yes if you are using metformin with insulin if you are using metformin with sulfonylurea if you are using metformin with maybe some other combinations which have hypoglycemia as a potent side effect then you may see an additive effect but in general situations metformin causing hypoglycemia is not very commonly seen so that is why it is a very good choice for people who are suffering from type 2 diabetes because that is why if you look at the american diabetic association guidelines if you are if you are diagnosed with type 2 diabetes the initial choice is metformin plus lifestyle modifications so if you are on metformin then it is good yeah obviously it depends on lot of other factors your hba1c level your fasting blood glucose lot of other things i'm not going into that another effect of metformin is it causes vitamin b12 deficiency now this is very important vitamin b12 is necessary for a variety of functions in the body especially in the proper you know production of rbcs vitamin b12 is necessary vitamin b12 is also important for your hair growth in fact your healthy hair growth so and vitamin b12 is also important for nerve function to some extent vitamin b12 is also good for regulating your mood it is also good for regulating your sleep patterns and all but that the proportion is less major functions are what i mentioned right now so if metformin is being used for a long term anyways you will be using it for a long term so it can cause vitamin b12 deficiency because it inhibits the reabsorption of vitamin b12 from the small intestine so in that condition some very significant things can occur in the long run number 1 it can cause hair loss especially for those people who are biotin deficient also if you are deficient of vitamin b7 that is biotin and then if you are taking metformin as well then it can be an additive effect so it can cause hair loss so if in your clinical practice or anywhere if you are seeing that a patient is taking metformin for a long time and they are having hair loss as well then i personally would suggest that if you if possible try to get a vitamin assay of those patients you know vitamin b7 vitamin b12 if possible because somewhere or the other there may be a correlation metformin you know very well that its taste is not so good it it has a metallic taste so usually we advise patients to take it after food means with food so that the problem of metallic taste can be reduced to some extent so these are some of the interesting aspects of metformin that i thought i will be sharing with you i hope this video is informative for you i what my actually plan is i will be making notes about specific medications what are interesting aspects about them you can check into my linkedin profile i have talked about first generation antipsychotics their classification i have talked about ace inhibitors lot of other things i have talked about uh, please remember that all the guidance that i am providing you is free of cost you can connect to me on whatsapp if you need any kind of guidance i'll be there for you it's just that my schedule is a bit busy but definitely i'll try to be there for you and uh, please do share this video to other people as well so that you can get an idea as in how i study pharmacology i take my time i try to understand the mechanism behind why things occur so that my memory is enhanced and polished in the process thanks a lot for listening to me i'll definitely be back with another interesting video until then it's bye